okay? So this low spinning hook kick, if Alex is in a fighting stance here, this would not be the best setup for me to drop and turn and do my low spinning hook kick. I would either have to step shift and go the other way, or I'd have to make sure that Alex somehow ended up in this position because I want to come from the back side of his leg. For me to run into his shin from the front side and then his leg locks out, doesn't give me a good opportunity to sweep his leg out or to take him out. From here, I'm not gonna do it fully. From here, I can drop and then I'd be able to cut that leg out. Now, that kick hurts as well. And what we're doing, uh, Alex, if you could just switch stances for me and pull up your pant leg. All right, so the goal here is not to hit up towards the knee where the knee will flex. The goal here is to do the low spinning hook kick. Here's the midway, the ankle and just below the calf. This lower half is where we are literally cutting out. It's, it's a weight center, so it carries a lot of nerves. It hurts, um, but it also is lower to the base, which means I can take his leg out. Does that make sense, okay? All right, cool. So we're gonna go through some of the base fundamentals of doing the kick, okay? Um, so Alex, if you want, uh, just hang out for a little bit, say hi to whoever's coming on. All right, we're gonna rock this out. If you guys catch the replay, please write hashtag replay, what's up, give me comments, whatever. Okay, anybody on Alex? Uh, Melissa Ann Wing. Hey, what's up? All right, up? so we're gonna do this from uh, a, a, just a basic footwork position where I'm sparring and I'm gonna turn and drop. Now remember, I can do this from a standing position, okay? Sometimes we practice things for speed, sometimes we practice things for power. When I do a hook kick from here and I just go, I would say I'm using it more for speed. When I use a hook kick and I take my full turn step and go through the whole motion, I would say that I'm using it for power, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this both ways today. First, I'm gonna start in the sideways position, and I wanna show you what's called the three-point drop stance. My hands would turn and come down here between my legs, and then, of course, the kick would fire out, all right? So same thing if I was here. As I turn, my hands come down. My right hand's gonna go in between the legs here. So both of my palms, I'm gonna move my leg out of the way here for you. Both of my palms are here, and I have my base. This creates stability. If my hands are back here and I kick, I'm gonna end up falling back here where my hands are. This helps keeps my weight forward because where's my legs going back here. So I'm kind of counterbalancing that weight as I go through this kick. Okay, so one more time, if I'm here, I'm gonna slowly drop, I will kick, and I'm back in my position here. Okay, so if I'm here, I would turn my body, I would drop, kick, and then I'm back here. If I'm here, I would slowly turn, drop my body, and kick, and I'm back here. Now, there are some styles that put the knee down. I'm not gonna say if that's right or wrong. It's, just, it's a methodology. If I'm out on the asphalt or something, I don't know if I wanna grind my knee into the floor. Depends, my knee might touch, it might not touch. I was taught to pivot on the ball of that foot with the three-point drop stance to do that. So, not saying one way is better than the other, I'm just saying this is the way that we're doing it in the video today. So, experiment with it, learn from it, uh, try it, okay? So, uh, Alex, would you grab the pads real quick? All right, trying to keep this video short for you guys so we get the info in, you can go practice it and work it, okay? So come over to the side, Alex. All right. Uh, I always use uh, I always use more than one pad. We're just going to use two today, um, but it gives me a little bit of resistance because when I hit Alex in his leg, his leg's not a paperweight that just kind of sweeps away. There's a, there's a little resistance behind it. So Alex, would you just take a knee? Good. And Alex's going to hold this position. I would not have that leg. Yeah. All right. And. Um, so Alex is gonna hold this approximately uh, anywhere from three to six inches off the floor. He doesn't want it down at the floor because remember, we're not hitting down here. We're hitting up probably about six to eight inches off the floor, okay? So from here, I'll start in this sideways position and my object is to turn and drop and then I'm gonna fire through, okay? So I'm gonna turn and drop and fire through. Would you grab that for me, sir? Thanks. Okay. Now, as you can see, it does generate, I mean, Alex is holding pretty hard, 
it generates a good amount of power. Let's do it from the other side. I'm trying to give you guys every angle possible so you can see this. All right, so we're in our setup here. Let's move this way a little bit. All right, so we're in our setup. I'm gonna turn my hand slide in between. Now remember, I would be releasing this leg as I was doing this. So this really wouldn't be here. My leg literally would be coming out as I do this. Again, one, two, three, point drop stance. I'm literally turning on the ball of my foot, and this is keeping me stable as I do the kick. So I'm back here, I'm gonna turn, and I'm back to my stance here, okay? Uh, let's do one, in at the, like, how about this way? Move here a little bit more, Alex. I'm trying to give you guys as many angles as possible. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Uh, this, is a, this is not an easy kick. This is something I've been working on for 30 years. So um, one more time from here. Turn, drop, the leg releases as I touch the floor, okay? So again, how I just did it is how all of you guys should start. You should start with the slow motion and then slowly build to the power, okay? Now, as you saw, most of the kicks, because I'm not perfect, most of the kicks, I return fully to my stance. This is an important part of Alex Becker, are you please? This is an important part of maintaining balance. A lot of times we get enamored with hitting the target. The problem is, well, in a, in a fight or in, in a reality situation that I might miss. So if my dependency is on hitting the target and that, whatever happens afterwards doesn't matter, I may be vulnerable to a counterattack. But by returning quickly and getting in my fighting position, even if I missed, I have a better chance of defending myself. So keep that in mind as you're practicing. All right, let's just do this one more time. All right, now I'm gonna use a full, what we call a turn step. So if I was here and I went into an attack him, he might think that I was gonna throw a kick or a roundhouse. I step, I drop, and I'm into my kick. So at this point, I'm just literally stepping to this position, dropping, and then I'm doing the kick. Let's switch. Good. So now all I'm doing is taking this extra turn step that we've been working on. So I'm gonna, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna step here, turn step, drop, and then I'm in my kick, okay? So turn step, drop, and I'm in my kick. I was worried about hitting Alex's hand that time. Yeah. All right, thanks Alex, we're good. All right, so a couple key points here. One is the three point drop stance. How to find that balanced position. Remember the hands, when they come around, you want them in front of you because your kick's gonna go through here. So we have to think about opposite lines of power, okay? Two. You have the standing method or you have the, the, the fighting or the sparring where I'm stepping in and turning. 